Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob and welcome back to episode number 45 of the Houston Astros franchise here on MLB The Show 20. Today we'll be recapping the year one offseason live stream that took place this past Friday night. Just kind of recapping all the big moves that happened and it was a pretty busy offseason around the league. So if you're excited for this one, make sure you leave a like and subscribe, especially if you want more franchise content as we continue the road to 100 subscribers. So we have a couple decision makes with this team. Obviously, we have a pretty solid squad, but there are some players getting older, and our division rival Oakland Athletics just won the World Series in seven games in a phenomenal series. So make sure you check out that one as well, as that was a great World Series. Starting off with the retirees, there's really no surprising retirees. We didn't have anybody retire other than those who just based off ability. Uh, a couple of big names, Carlos Gonzalez, Jesse Davis, some of the free agents, Curtis Granderson, Adam Wainwright of the Cardinals also retired, Melky Cabrera, and a bunch of other folks. People who didn't retire, Albert Pujols and Miguel Cabrera, they're still in the league. There was no inductees this year into the Hall of Fame, and here is our coaching staff starting off with the manager. I thought about firing Johnny Cook. I thought he did okay, but he does have that interim title, especially after the scandal last year. But we are going to keep Johnny Cook around for another year, as we are also missing a hitting, pitching, and third base coach. Here are free agents that we can negotiate with before the season, before free agency starts. Starting off with the big one, George Springer. And I did not want George Springer to leave, so we offered him three years, 36 mil, more than he's asking for. He's asking for 10 mil a year. We're going to offer him 12 mil a year. Another player that was an exclusive free agent is Michael Brantley. Um, he had a down year last year by his standards, and we have Kyle Tucker in the wings. But I don't know if Kyle Tucker is fully ready to be the left fielder yet, so we offered Brantley a shorter or less expensive deal than he wanted, 5.5 mil. I'm okay with him testing free agency, so that's why I kind of lowballed him. Yasiel Puig, we have a team option on Yasiel Puig, and he did phenomenal after signing with the team, but... You know, he has been, has his history as a head case, and for a team that's looking to, you know, increase their image after the scandal, I think it's best to be both part ways. He improved his stock, and we got some good play out of him. So, Yasiel Puig will be a free agent. And then Brad Peacock, our best reliever last year, wasn't the greatest, but you want to bring back your best reliever from the previous season. So, we offered him one year at $1.8 million. Springer did take his contract offer before free agency, so we got to lock him in without having to go to a bidding war with anybody which is really nice. And Brad Peacock also signed his $1.8 year million dollar deal for one year, so he will be back as well. Uh, we got our hitting coach, Shane Rivera, for the next two years, who we wanted, and as well as our pitching coach, J.P. Escobar. So we got all of our coaching staff positions that we wanted to fill. So before free agency, we got a deal from the Brewers, and they wanted to trade us Avisel Garcia and Lorenzo Cain for Zach Grinke. And if you've been following the series, I've been talking about how this offseason, we got to pay both Grinke and Verlander. So I think we wanted to move one. And this is a pretty solid deal. We get a solid left fielder in Avisel Garcia, 87 overall B potential. He could be that left field position that we've been looking for, especially with Brantley maybe testing free agency and Tucker not being quite ready. And then on top of that, you get Lorenzo Cain, who was an all-star this past year in Milwaukee. I don't really plan on keeping Kane around long term, but he is also a nice pickup. So we're actually going to send this deal. So the first big move has been made. Zach Grinke is back in Milwaukee with the Brewers, and we get Avisel Garcia and Lorenzo Kane. I'm going to put Lorenzo Kane on the trade block, though. I'm going to try to flip him for some players, especially after just signing George Springer. And I think we can get a good solid amount for Lorenzo Kane. Speaking of the trade block, the biggest surprise, we're going to put Roberto Osuna on the trade block going in the offseason. He has his history, you know, with his sketchy history of the past, and nothing would make a bigger statement that you want to clean up your image than trading your top closer talent. He's young, and he's, going to, he's a phenomenal player, but, you know, we want to clean up this image, and Osuna might have to go. So we put him on the block, see what happens, see what offers we get for him. Uh, take a look at top some of the top free agents, Mookie Betts, DJ LeMayhew, Kirby Yates, Trevor Bauer. There's a lot of good talent out there this year. Colton Wong, Liam Hendricks. But we looked at the re relief pitcher. You know, our relief pitching struggled this year. And there was really no relief pitcher that just jumped off the table. So we actually did not sign a relief pitcher. So nobody that was qualified as relief pitcher. But we did go after Estevan Anaya, a closer out of Puerto Rico. So he is a young stud that we'd like to bring 
bat or bring onto the squad. Take a look at first baseman. Yuli is getting older, so I wanted to get maybe another first baseman to platoon with him. I looked at CJ Crone. I looked at Justin Smoke, and I decided we're going to offer Smoke a one-year deal. Now in right field, Puig not being brought back. There's a lot of right field talent as well. There was Jay Bruce who we thought about trading for. There's Cameron Maben who I've thought about to get some more speed. And there's Josh Reddick, the former Houston Astro who we traded this off or at the deadline to St. Louis. And we're kind of interested in bringing him back. So I'm offering him a one-year $2.4 million deal. He did great after being traded for, to St. Louis. So I want to see how that did. And putting Osuna on the trade block, we're going to think about Brad Hand. I thought about maybe Brad Hand. Um, maybe bringing him in just in case we do trade Osuna. And then Michael Brantley, he actually did take that $5.5 million deal. So I didn't really expect him to take that, but now we have a log jam at left field. So we're going to throw him on the block as well. Sim in the first day in free agency, and the first big domino falls. Mookie Betts signs a 10-year, $181 million contract with the Baltimore Orioles. Wow, what a bombshell. Orioles just, you thought they were rebuilding, and they go out and get the best possible player. Look at that deal. He is due to get paid, and the Orioles are trying to make a statement to keep up with AL East. That is going to be a fun division to watch this year. Back to Brad Pan. We're actually going to offer him the deal now. One year, $5.3 million deal. So we got to try to beat out the Royals if we want him. I also thought about D. Gordon. You know, we didn't steal a lot of bases this offseason or this past season. So I thought about trying to bring in D. Gordon to be a utility man, but he wants $3.5 million to be a backup. And I don't really feel like offering him that. I didn't want to give him that much money. We get a trade offer here from the Mets, Brad Brock for Yuli. An interesting offer, but we're going to decline that one. I don't really think Brad Brock would do a lot for our bullpen. Back to right field, I thought about Cameron Maven once more. He had a pretty solid year last year, but he is getting older, and I feel like he is going to kind of slow down, so I didn't want to bring him in. We're still sticking with Redick. And then we get the deal from Brad Hand done, one year, $5.2 million. So we have our potential closer if Osuna is traded. And if he is not, Hand will be a phenomenal piece to at least have in the setup position. We also do get Justin Smoke. He signed his one-year contract. He had a solid year last year in Milwaukee, hitting 293 with 25 dingers. At the age of 34, the former Gamecock, Go Cox, hoping he can replicate that in 2021. Some another day in the league, and Starling Marte is signed by the Chicago White Sox to a two-year $20.6 million deal. So the former Diamondback head into the south side as the Sox try to dethrone the Minnesota Twins in the AL Central. He had a pretty okay year for the Diamondbacks. And then we sim another day, and the White Sox not done making signings. They signed Liam Hendricks away from our division rival and World Series champion, Oakland Athletics, to a three-year $27 million deal. And then they signed DJ LeMahieu away from New York for a four-year $70 million deal. So the White Sox looking to become that premier team in Chicago with their big-time signings. Then there's D. Gordon again. I'm still on the fence with D. Gordon. I want to bring him in. He can play outfield. He can play middle infield. We don't really have a good middle infield depth. And I also thought about Eduardo Nunez as a cheaper option, but he is older as well, and I feel like he is going to digress. So we're not going to bring in either guy in this offseason. We do get Estevan Anaya, the Puerto Rico national team representative. Their closer had a phenomenal season down there in Puerto Rico. He will start off in the minor leagues, but he could be our closer of the future. Trevor Bauer signs with the Cubs, not the White Sox, the other Chicago team, to a five-year, $56.3 million contract. And then the Phillies are going to bring in Kirby Yates from San Diego to a four-year, $34.5 million deal. So a lot of the big market teams making moves. One team you have not seen make moves, though, is the Los Angeles Dodgers. They have kind of struck out in free agency. And we do bring back Josh Reddick for a second go-around in Houston. So we traded him and got Alex Reyes and then kind of got him back. So we kind of got Alex Reyes for free from St. Louis on that side. He hit 265 last year. A lot of that happening after we traded him. Speaking of trades, here are a lot of trades going on around the, around the league. And there's a big one between the Braves and the Red Sox. The Red Sox trade Andrew Benatendi to the Braves. So the 26-year-old left fielder who... Has a pretty solid bat. It's a very interesting trade the Red Sox are going to make. He hit very well last year in Boston, hitting 305. But Red Sox get two great prospects, 23-year-old Austin Riley, the third baseman, as well as a catcher by the name of Shea Longelleris, I guess. He's an A over a potential catcher, and he has a very, very good chance to be their catcher of the future. So a very big-time deal happening. 
And then the Chicago White Sox, they also pick up Zach Britton from the Yankees. We thought about trading for him at the deadline last year. He didn't have a great deal and he is owed a lot of money, but interesting to see the Chicago White Sox pick up another player. More trades going around the league, specifically one between the Phillies and the Rays. The Phillies acquire Kevin Kiermeyer for the Rays for Andrew McCutcheon and a prospect. Kiermeyer sat out a lot of last year with an injury and it'll be interesting to see how he rebounds while the Rays are getting a solid left fielder and Andrew McCutcheon. It looks like they're kind of in win now mode. McCutcheon had a better year, second time, second full season in Philadelphia. And they also get Rafael Marchin, another nice catcher prospect. We simulate a little farther, and we get a deal now from the Padres. They want Lorenzo Cain, and they're offering us two prospects, relief pitcher Andres Munoz and closing pitcher Trey Wingarten. Andres Munoz, a 68 overall B potential. Not quite major ready in my mind, but he could help out our bullpen down the line. And same with Trey Wingenter, 65 overall B potential. Two guys who could help out our bullpen down the line, and they're wanting a player we weren't even really going to play anyway in Lorenzo Kane. So I thought this was a nice flip, get two solid prospects for Kane. And so that finishes off that trade for us. Another big trade going around the league, Cardinals and Blue Jays. The Cardinals re-pick up Randall Gritchick. So he is back in St. Louis. They give up quite a coup and a couple of prospects as well as Andrew Miller. But Randall Gritchick back in St. Louis. He's still got a lot left. He hit 273 last year with 31 dingers. So it did very well in his three years in Toronto. And the Cardinals gave up 35-year-old relief pitcher Andrew Miller. So a long-time veteran is in Toronto, probably to end his career, as well as a couple of prospects shipped that way. One more trade going around the league. There's well, actually some more trades going around the league. I'm not going to go into all of them, but here's a list of all those. You can pause it and take a look at them if you want. But we sent him a couple more days, and there's another big trade in between division rivals. Colton Wong is traded to Cincinnati for a pair of prospects to St. Louis. So right after they trade for Gridchick, they trade another player, I guess, to try to make sense, you know, money-wise. Colton Wong, 30 years old. He's very solid bat. Didn't have a good year in St. Louis, though. He's looking to rebound in new home in Cincinnati. That takes us to the Rule 5 draft. We didn't really have a Rule 5 draft pick. Not entirely sure why. It probably has to do with something with our suspensions or players that we signed. But we're going to go through the Rule 5 draft really quickly. A lot of players being selected in the first round. And we did lose one player in the Rule 5 draft. We lost an outfielder to our division rival Texas Rangers. So they have to keep him on the Major League roster for the season. So we might get a good look at him. And that's Alex McKenna. This 23-year-old B potential center fielder. We do have Miles Straw already, so it's not the worst thing in the world that he got drafted, but it kind of stings a little bit. Some more trades going around the league. Rangers and Orioles make a trade. The Orioles are in win-now mode for sure now as they pick up longtime Ranger Elvis Andrews in a trade. I'm happy for it. That means the Rangers are rebuilding, and I'm perfectly fine with the Rangers rebuilding. I don't mind not having to face Elvis Andrews as much. And then another trade between the Padres and the Cardinals. The Cardinals acquired Nolan Gorman, their former top prospect, who was traded last year at the deadline to Toronto in the Lourdes Gurriel Jr. trade. He bounced around the league, but he's back home with the St. Louis Cardinals. They gave up shortstop Paul DeJong, so completely dismantling their middle infield. Same thing with the Athletics. A big trade, very surprising trade for the World Series champs. They trade Marcus Simeon to the Brewers for a pair of prospects. As I guess Oakland don't want to pay all their stars. They are a small market team, but they give up Marcus Simeon. And another shocking trade with prospects. Casey Mize, the prize prospect in Detroit, got traded to Toronto for a nice solid prospect in return. But still, Casey Mize in Toronto, and now Miguel Geraldo is in Detroit. Back to free agency after all those trades. There's a couple players left. I thought about bringing back Charlie Morton to Houston once more. He's still in there. He's not as good as he once was, but he would be a nice piece in the rotation. Didn't bring him in. But here's a guy that we are thinking about bringing in, Mark Canna. He had a great year last year with Oakland. He's still sitting there in free agency. So we're going to make a play for Canna, offer him one year, one and a half million dollars to kind of be a depth piece. And he takes us up on our offer. So Mark Canna is now a part of the Houston Astros. He's a great bat to have off your bench. He had 330 last year with 33 dingers. So he might even start in the outfield and that's going to bring us to an end of the offseason next is spring training but that is the 2020 2021 offseason year one in houston a lot of surprising moves i thought we ended up very very strong coming out of that 
But that's going to be it with the offseason episode. Next, we will take a look at spring training. Might even stream some spring training games this next weekend. We'll have to wait and see. But thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe down below. What do you guys think of our moves? Do you think we improved? Do you think we went down? Let me know in the comments. This is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.